homecoming. Well, that may be befitting because a year ago it was homecoming at Amherst, Massachusetts when Delaware won over Massachusetts, a final count of 14 to 13. And Delaware has, until today, and it's not over yet, Howard, has no, always won when they played Mass. There's still plenty of time left. There's eight minutes and 21 seconds, but Delaware's going to have to, uh, going to have to do something to solve this Massachusetts defense, whether it means deviating from their game plan or... So far, the Mass defense has except for the one long run by John Merklinger of 74 yards, and Merklinger is shaken up and not in the ball game now for Delaware. Walsh to kick it off. It is driving Quezon deep into the end zone, and the ends will bring it out at the 20-yard line. Quezon about six to seven yards deep in the end zone. In case the ball does get loose. First and 10, this is Kaysan, and he's not gonna get much. They just do an excellent job, do the Minutemen. The backers, Mike Favreau, 45, and Craig Lezinski, 38. The 23-yard line is where the ball is down with Kaysan carrying it, three-yard pickup. Second down and seven. And we have Pat McKee in its center, number 66, and Doug Martin is now in at the guard position. Those two had not seen service early in the contest because of a flu bug. Webster throws it. He's got his receiver, Hammond, and here at the 36-yard line. Quickly to the field on the sideline, Bill Maley. Bill, let's get your comments here as we are playing in the fourth quarter. All right, well, the offense can't seem to move the ball in a steady drive, but the one thing they did show today is they have a big play capability with John Merklinger's 74-yard uh, run. They're going to need another big play like that to get him out of the hole here, and they need six now with that last field goal. Bill Maley, former outstanding defensive player for the University of Delaware from the sideline at Delaware Stadium, and now the Hens want to ask for a timeout. B.J. Webster trots to the sideline. A little confusion as the Hens came out of the huddle. Delaware trailing here at 13 to 9. With 7 minutes and 19 seconds remaining to be played in the football contest. I think we're going to get another chance here to see this catch made by Paul Hammond. Massachusetts 13, Delaware 9. Fourth quarter action. Webster comes back to the huddle. But Hammond on the reception a moment ago, giving Delaware a first down. Out here where the football is sitting now at the 37. Webster delivering the football. He delivered it nicely that time. He's been a little bit wild on the high side. But this time he hits Hammond perfectly. And Delaware... We'll have it first and ten. He had a defender right in his face that time, too. At their 37-yard line. Higher in motion. Massachusetts is waiting for the reverse. David Cavanaugh, the flag contract. is going to go down, and that's not going to help at all. Hammond upset by the great defensive play by that fellow right there, high-fiving it. David Cavanaugh, the defensive end, he just stayed at home and waited for Hammond to come back around. I don't know how Massachusetts could have been ready for that play, Len. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Delaware has tried that play all year. We haven't seen it. There I, was, it's just a matter of a defensive end staying home and not going for the trickery that Delaware tries to employ with its wing T offense. And this is a major step off. There had already been a loss of close to 10 yards, and this will push Delaware back inside the 15-yard line. Unsportsmanlike conduct is the call, and a good call. Back to the 14-yard line, Hammond upset with himself. It will be second down and 32, and that's just what Delaware did not need. We are inside the seven-minute mark. Guy Darienzo has replaced Hammond as you may anticipate, at the split receiver spot. Quezon, he's juggling it. And he's out to the 26-yard line before Tracy catches up with him. Peter Tracy, the nose guard, filtering behind the play. The pickup is out to the 26. Third down, and Delaware will still need some 20 yards. 
21 to be exact. Kayson, look at this. He's juggling the football. It's Great defensive potato. play by Peter Tracy. It was a nice defensive play. Here's Kayson. He's no small guy either. 240 pounds. Well, they, as I, we've said a couple of times, they match up extremely well size-wise. Third down. Long way. Into traffic. Fuller, did he have the reception? No. And the official is going to get an argument here on the sideline, but Fuller trying to keep both feet in bounds as he went for the interception. They'll just rule it as a long incompletion. Let's take another look. He, when he fell down, he was out of bounds, but I wonder where his feet were. Here he this comes. Is Fuller. Oh, we, awful hard, hard to see. Hard to tell if he had it or not. He had the football, that's for sure. Did he have his feet down? Anderson will punt it for Delaware. He's been punting a lot the last two weeks, and this one's not going to go very far. High, but off the side of his foot. Fuller's going to fumble the football. Delaware's diving for it. A lot of people in that pile, then. Pulling them off one by one. Massachusetts says we've got it. They do. Massachusetts. I don't know Jackson, who had it. Jackson. Kevin Jackson. Touchdown receiver. Johnny on the spot with the fumble recovery. And it's needed a turnover right there. We are inside the six-minute mark here at Delaware Stadium. Massachusetts. Never a winner against Delaware. Threatening to snap not only their own personal seven-game losing streak to the hands, but a 30-game losing streak that belongs to Yankee Conference opponents against the University of Delaware. That dates back to 1967. And here is Massachusetts ball carrier, Duckworth Range. He always runs like a scared rabbit. Second down and four. Make that second and six as he picks up four on the carry. The sun shining down on the Massachusetts Minutemen. Simeone splits to the far side. Now Jackson in motion. Duckworth Grange, he just dives forward for a couple of yards. He is willing to give up the body if it will mean success for Massachusetts. Delaware looked like they were keying on him that time also, Len. There's four or five blue shirts waiting for him at the line of scrimmage. His dive was only good for one yard. He's hurt a little bit as he comes to the sideline. I guess so. You well, if you, can, if you can say there is such a thing, this is probably one of the biggest plays of the ball game for Delaware right here. They have to hold Massachusetts. I don't think they can give him another first down. Clock starting to become a factor. Simeon got it off as I Joe Quake was draped around his legs, and Simeon does manage to avoid the sack. Tremendous awareness on the part of Simeon. He, even though he was halfway down, he was able to spot a white shirt and, and make, you know, even even though it was a half-hearted attempt. He's a strong make, kid, 6'2", 220. He's got a couple of years left in Massachusetts, only a sophomore, and saw a considerable time a year ago as a freshman, leading them to three wins in their last four ball games. As Bob Pickett decided to go with youth. They're coming, but they're not going to get there. Hanging it high is Wood, and it is easily into the end zone, so Delaware again will start with that four field position. You know, this sounds like a broken record, Paul, but uh, Howard, but uh, four field position a week ago against Lehigh, four field position against Westchester in the opening ball game as well, and the Hens haven't had great field position here today, and they the can best to field it over. The best field possession they had today was on the uh, second half kickoff return, and they didn't get any points out of that. Four minutes, 26 seconds remaining to be played in the contest. Unable to bring it in his higher. Delaware is Trump. trying to find a halfback or someone with speed to take something out of the flanks and then carry it upfield. But Webster is not able to deliver the football on target. Now I think BJ will be the first one to tell you he's not very sharp today also. He's, that ball was thrown behind. 
Philly's passing game is way off. Darienzo was in on that play. He's going to come out. He was not the intended receiver. Meyer was the intended receiver. Mike Lane for Delaware. Coming into the near sideline, out of our view. Second down and 10. Webster delivers. Pontiacus has got it. Boy, did he take a shot from Brady Fuller. Well, I'll tell you, Fuller, believe me, anybody who catches a football in front of Brady Fuller is going to pay for it. Fuller comes to play football. Number four, one of two safeties employed by the Minutemen. He really smacks him. He's 6'2", goes about a solid 198 from White Plains in New York. Third team All-American as a sophomore. He has 13 career pass interceptions. He almost had 14 a moment ago. First down for Delaware at the 32. Beat the clock is the game now. Webster's going to toss it. And Fuller is the closest, closest man to the to ball. Kaysan had run his pattern and then had over to the sideline and then was making his way back in toward the middle of the field. And Webster threw to the sideline. Four points separates Delaware and Massachusetts. 13 and 9 is our count. George Papasitis with two field goals and an extra point. His field goals were nice ones, 40 yards and 41 yards. Delaware's only touchdown. Coming on a 74-yard run by Merklinger. Gasson hit a 32-yard field goal for the Hens. Second down and 10. Going long. Barry Enzo, no! Barry Enzo thinks he has it, and the officials are now going to give it to him. I'll tell you why, Howard. The official behind Darienzo signaled no, right. but the official in front of him said yes, he did have possession of the football. Let's look at it again. One. I'll tell you, he can't stretch out much longer than he was when he comes into the picture. Watch this. He's got it. Oh, my goodness. He caught that no. ball on the, on the last point. Delaware at the mass. 27-yard line, first and 10, Quezon in motion. Is it Hammond? I believe it's Chris Heyer. It's Heyer. Chris Heyer with the reception gives Delaware first and goal at the mass eight-yard line. Look at it again, and he almost broke for the score. If Shea's not there... Boy, look, look at Shea just holding on. He is holding on for dear oh. life. Yeah, and right right before the, the first of these two consecutive completions, I was about to tell you, with just over three minutes left, uh, if Delaware didn't get a first down there, it might have been the last time they saw the ball in the game. Here's higher in motion. First and goal from the eight. Quezon, not much. Fine defensive pressure. Sliding down nicely was Ken Johnson, the left defensive tackle, 71, and he made the stop on Quezon, and Quezon gets two yards. I think Delaware might be ready for that play where they send Quezon over into the corner of the end zone. He's well, they, been able to do a good job of getting open on that play this year. That worked last week as Lehigh, in all honesty, blew the coverage. They went for higher, floating out into the flat. Here it comes. Quezon, double wing formation. Let's see if he goes in motion. He does not. There he goes. Webster. Pontiacus. Batted away by Shea. Jack Shea bats it away from Pontiacus at the last moment. And third down will be upcoming. And we've got an injured Massachusetts player on the field. But Kaysan, uh, like you said, he did not go into motion that time. Okay, let's, let's watch the, the, the deflection here. The ball hangs up a little bit too long, lets Shea recover, and he knocks it away from Pontiacus. I'll tell you, had that ball been thrown a little bit higher with Pontiacus's leaping ability, and he likes to catch him up high, it may have been a different story. But as it is, it goes as an incomplete pass. Kaysan was the trailer on that play. That was the comment I was starting to make before we got the replay. Although he didn't go into motion, uh, he did break through the middle of the line. He got into the end zone, and then he was following Pontiacos out toward the, the right sideline. Third and goal for Delaware. Lane splits into the near sideline. Iyer setting up, and Webster wants quiet. Field goal's no good here. Higher in motion. 
Drills it. Touchdown! Steve Audiakis. And he didn't have to jump for that one. As they celebrate in the end zone, Tom Pressure it in to help do the blocking, and he celebrates along with Pontiacus. That ball drilled. Pontiacus dives in front of Shea for the reception. And Delaware has taken a two-point lead here at 15-13. We've got Webster. Webster. Is injured. I got to tell you, Len, the last the last couple of minutes of this ball, this last series, Webster has been as sharp as we've seen him all year. Just a complete turnaround from what he's done for the uh, first uh, 56 minutes of the ball game. Well, in all fairness, let's give Guy Darienzo a big, big. <laughs> slap on the back because it was his diving reception that one official said no and the other official said go that gave Delaware life. They needed something here late and Darienzo gave them a little more air in the balloon so to speak. Massachusetts defense is just they've got to they've got to feel crushed. I mean they've, they've played so well up to now and then in just a couple of minutes Delaware has literally picked them apart. 51-yard pass play. Let's check uh, in on the sidelines while we have this stoppage of play with Bill Maley. Bill, you've been uh, down there looking at Delaware come on here in the last uh, couple of plays. Your comments? Well, like I said before, they needed a big play. They got it. Uh, now they've all, it has to happen. The defense has to hold on. I just put uh, to the kicker, Papa Cetus. He says he's hit from 54 yards before. He says he's confident he can hit from 50 or 55 right now. So defense is going to have to stop him. You know, they're not even going to let him let him get to the 30-yard line or so. So it's going to be down to the defense again. B.J. Webster. Thank you, Bill. B.J. Webster being helped off to the sideline, shaken as he throws that touchdown pass to Steve Paniakis. This is an important extra point. Sure is. Gasson drills it. We had a minute man break through. It is good and gives Delaware a three-point advantage. Breaking through number 45, Mike Favreau. He almost got to the football, but John Gasson drills it. And Delaware has taken the lead over Massachusetts with exactly two minutes remaining to be played. The correct score, Delaware 16 and the University of Massachusetts 13. We'll be back in a moment. Super E Plus, a new symbol for excellence in energy efficient homes. For years, home buyers have needed a program that certifies energy saving construction. So Delmarva Power, with the help of builders and architects, has developed Super E Plus. The results? Year round living comfort, high resale value, and money saving efficiency. To find out more, contact your Delmarva Power district office and discover the benefits of Super E Plus. Tyrolia presents the new total diagonal system. Today's skiers demand the most advanced equipment. The new diagonal reflex toe and the Tyrolia diagonal heel work perfectly together as a total system. Step up to the performance of Tyrolia's total diagonals. University of Delaware now out in front of Massachusetts here on homecoming day. These two teams always go head to head. This year it's no different. Gasson kicks it off. He wants to try to kick it deep. Jenkins at the 5, the 10, 15, and not quite over the 20 yard line. Delaware has a wave of blue shirts down. One of them is being worn by Todd Ranika. And Delaware will set up defensively as Massachusetts trailing by three at 16 to 13 will operate first and 10 from their own 22 yard line. They've got to go 78 yards. By the way, that pass completion that Darienzo made to set up Delaware's score, 51 yards from quarterback B.J. Webster. Jackson to the near side. Just throwing it deep. Kenny Pulaski cannot bring it in. Jim Pulaski. Kenny Pulaski, his twin brother, he's not in the lineup right now. But 
Jim Pulaski unable to bring it in as Thay, the intended receiver, turned around and played defense for the last couple of yards on that pass play. Clock stopping with 148. The question now, I guess, Len, is if Massachusetts can't get the touchdown, how close do they feel they have to get before they go for the field goal? And I'll tell you one thing. I do believe that the way they played so well today, I think Bob Pickett would go for it if they could go for the field goal. Simeon's going to run it. Here he comes, heading for the out-of-bounds marker, and he is going to be close to a first down out over the 31-yard line. Jim Simeon showing a little quickness there. Well, those those yards are almost always open in this situation, Len, because uh, the team, you know, the team, in this case, it's Delaware. That's ahead by three points with uh, under two minutes to play. They're going to be dropping a lot of players back deep to avoid the long gainer, and a lot of times that middle is open for what we just saw, eight, eight to ten yard run by the quarterback. Third down, and a little better than one is needed. There's number 84, Gary Cannon. He's playing today. In Off place the side of John up on the sideline. <laughs> Third down and one. They need the first down, and they're going to try to get it, and they're going to get it. And more. Here's Jenkins. He is into Delaware territory. He found a little seam at the line of scrimmage to Jenkins, and he bursts for major yardage into Delaware territory at the 49-yard line. Massachusetts asking now for a timeout. 134 left on the clock here and here's another look at it Jenkins getting some blocking up front looks gets like his head down and then there's look, nobody home looks like Duckworth Grange on that run yeah he did look like Duckworth a little bit but that is Richard Jenkins and he is slow getting up he is uh, a long way from actually where he was tackled here at the near sideline Bank of Delaware scoreboard has it. Delaware 16, Massachusetts 13. With 134 remaining to be played, the Massachusetts sideline, the band intermixing with the football team. University of Massachusetts band in a pregame show really brought down the house. They're going to do it again at the end of the game for late arrivals. I would imagine when you come that far, <laughs> it, you should get an encore performance, especially when you're that good. Here is Bob Simeon splitting to the far side. Kevin Jackson to the near side. First and 10 at the Delaware 49-yard line. Simeon to air it out. Faye. And Faye has another first down. Or He does have a first down. They spot the football. And he got out of bounds to stop the clock as well. At the Delaware's 36-and-a-half-yard line. This is Delaware leading, but retreating right now as here comes UMass. I would say they need about 10 more yards, and, and they're well within range for Papasitis. Well, the way things are going right now, I don't think they're thinking field goal, How, uh, Howard. I think they're thinking six points right here. They still have plenty of time on the clock. Two timeouts left, 127 remaining. Simeon cannot get rid of the football. Cannon, Gary Cannon, storming in. The sophomore defensive end, he's playing in place of John Gannon, and now the official signals Mass has called for another timeout as Cannon and the Delaware cheerleaders whoop it up. Cannon knocks down Simeon back here at the 48-yard line. Oh, well, Major loss on the play of some 12 yards. Big play by Cannon, a big play. They, Massachusetts was close enough to where they could smell the tying field goal, and now they, they've got a long way to go. Back at the 48-yard line, and there's Cannon, there's UMass on the sideline, huddling with Bob Pickett, the head coach. But Simeone can get them there. He's, he's proven that this afternoon. He has got a very strong arm, strong arm, strong quarterback, 6'2", 220-pounder, Tubby Raymond on the sideline. There's Simeone back into the huddle. 115 on the clock. Mass will have one timeout left. And they will now face a second down and 22. Second down and 22. They'll have Jackson flank to the far side. Simeon split to the near side, and he'll have pressure right on him. Here's a flag thrown, and the pressure was too great on Simeon here on the near sideline, tying him up for Delaware out of our range was Tyrone Jones, but the flag was thrown as just too much pressure against was put Delaware, on by, I think. by Jones. Holding against will be Delaware. The, will be the call against Delaware. It happened right down here in front of me. As Simeone went back, I was watching Jones against Bob Simeone. And Here's the play again. 
Let's look for our flag here on the replay. As Simeon's got time, he's going to come forward, and he'll be dropped, but there is a flag thrown just out of our view. Didn't see it. And it is a step off against Delaware to the 34-yard line. The flag was dropped to the near sideline as Tyrone Jones checked up Bob Simeon. And he did a, a little bit uh, too long and too rough. 34-yard line, second down and six. Quig is in. Simeon going for it all. Jackson unable to bring it in. I think he would have been out of bounds anyway, Len. But I'll tell you, Simeon aired it out. Jackson tried to run under it. Somebody did a pretty good job of hanging on to Joe Quigg that time also. Quigg trying to put the pressure on, but he never got there. And let's watch Simeon go. air it out. Going for the corner, going for Jackson. He has beaten the secondary. He is out of bounds right there. He would have not been in bounds had he caught the football. It's pretty your, close. Your uh, eyes are excellent, Howard. Great camera work. Great That's camera a work. Great camera work indeed. Simeone and Jackson, twin receivers to the far side. Third down and about seven. Pressure. Cannon's got him. Down he goes. Gary Cannon. Gary Cannon gets to the quarterback, Jim Simeone. Back here near midfield, the Delaware fans, they love it. Massachusetts has just burned their last time out with 41 seconds left to play. Simeone, while he was uh, sitting down after being knocked down by Cannon, there's the Bank of Delaware scoreboard with 41 seconds left to play. Delaware 16, Massachusetts 13. Great football game. Massachusetts has, has played well, extremely well, Howard. They sure have. Uh, if things stay the way they are, and, and I'm not suggesting that they will, but if they do, that, that could be a very long trip home. They, they played just an outstanding ball game. Well, they always seem to play hard-nosed football against the Delaware Blue Hens. They lost it last year as they went for two points after scoring a touchdown late. 14 to 13 was that count. And as I said, they always give Delaware trouble. Towson State's coming into Delaware Stadium one week from now, and they'll hope to give the Hens fits. They like to throw the football a lot, and anybody who throws the football a lot gives Delaware trouble. Fourth down and 19 at the 46-yard line. Simeone, throwing it long. Incomplete. Overthrown. And Jackson, the antenna receiver, but back there covering for Delaware was number 24, Jeff Heinoski. He gets a congratulatory slap on the sideline. And Delaware, as Massachusetts comes to the sideline, they have put up a whale of a fight and look to have Delaware on the run, leading 13 to nine, but then Delaware with Guy Darienzo making a spectacular grab that one official said no on, the other official looking right at Darienzo said yes, 51 yard play helped set up the score. The final pass play for the score to Steve Pontiacus, John Spar is in at quarterback. He just gonna fall down. Remember Webster was shaken up, passing for the Go ahead and winning touchdown now as the clock winds down inside the 30-minute mark. The University of Delaware running its record now to three and two, but they have been in one whale of a battle against the Massachusetts Minutemen. Massachusetts will go down to a record of one win and four defeats as we look at Tubby Raymond congratulating everyone on the sideline as the clock runs down. Delaware has done it, coming from behind in the final two minutes, two and a half minutes, to win it at 16 to 13. Howard, uh, your observations, your final observations on what we saw here this homecoming weekend. Well, I hate to be cliche but 
at the risk of doing so, this is one of those games where probably neither team really deserved to lose. Uh, Massachusetts just played an outstanding game for, what, about the first 55 minutes, and Delaware came to life on that last drive, and they just they just marched the better part of the length of the football field and, and finally capped it off with a winning touchdown. I think it was a combination of a great defense that Massachusetts have has and uh, the after effects of the tough loss to Lehigh a week ago. But Delaware does rebound. There's Tubby Raymond walking off behind the Blue Hens. He's happy. The Minutemen are not going to be happy on their bus trip home. We have Bill Maley uh, standing down on the sideline. Bill, your final comments on what happened here at the stadium in Newark this afternoon. Well, it looks like Delaware has the Lehigh jinx. It looks like UMass has the Delaware. Delaware jinx. Uh, Lehigh keeps stealing games from Delaware. Three out of the last four years, Delaware stolen the game from UMass in the closing minutes. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just one of those things, just like Lehigh is with us. Thank you, Bill Bailey. Again, the final count from the University of Delaware Stadium in Newark. The University of Delaware's Blue Hens push their record now to three and two. Massachusetts will go home. One win and now four defeats. On the Bank of Delaware scoreboard here at Delaware Stadium in Newark, the final count for this homecoming Saturday as the University of Massachusetts band begins uh, to set up to entertain the crowd that is now filing out of the stadium and a lot of them are going to stick around to see that fine fine marching aggregation there's our final bank of delaware scoreboard delaware 16 massachusetts your host lee pantano shows you the atlantic city casino games and explains betting strategies that you can use plus entertainment and employment news from the resort Play your cards right every Thursday night on WNS-TV. Be a high roller with Casino Line, Thursdays at 8 p.m. WNS-TV, Wilmington, Newcastle. This is University of Delaware Football, sponsored by Bank of Delaware, Delaware's bank. Delmarva Super E Plus, the most valuable addition to your new home. And by Reikley, distributors of fine skiing equipment. Hello, everyone. This is Let Home Quest in company with Howard Kessner. We are at the University of Delaware Stadium in Newark. It is a beautiful autumnal setting here at the stadium on the campus of the University of Delaware. The opposition this weekend for the University of Delaware's Fighting Blue Hens, the Tigers, who have made the trip up from just outside of Baltimore, Towson State University. And they bring in a high aerial attack led by quarterback Brett Rogers. And Delaware, as always, as they say, had trouble with the pass. And they could have trouble today with Mr. Rogers. Well, I think the wind is going to be a big factor into this afternoon's game also, Len. One thing we have uh, this week that we haven't had for the last two weeks, we've got a team coming into Delaware Stadium that didn't lose to the Hens last year by one point. But what we have today might be even worse. I don't know whether you're madder if you lose by one point or if you're humiliated by 44. Last year, Delaware defeated Towson 51 to 7, and that game was 15 to 7 at the end of the first half. So Delaware did some damage to Towson in the second half. And like I say, I don't know whether I, I'd be more wary of a team I beat by one point or a team I beat by 44. Well, Division Two is Towson State status right now, but remember, Delaware against Division Two opposition is 0-1. They lost on the opening Saturday against Westchester. Delaware 3 and 2. Towson is coming in with a record of 4 and 1. We'll have the kickoff when we return in just a moment. Super E Plus, a new symbol for excellence in energy efficient homes. For years, home buyers have needed a program that certifies energy saving construction. So Delmarva Power, with the help of builders and architects, has developed Super E Plus. 
The result? Year-round living comfort, high retail value, and money-saving efficiency. To find out more, contact your Delmarva Power District office and discover the benefits of Super E+. Plus. Tyrolia presents the new Total Diagonal System. Today's skiers demand the most advanced equipment. The new diagonal reflex toe and the Tyrolia diagonal heel work perfectly together as a total system. Step up to the performance of Tyrolia's total diagonals. University of Delaware will be kicking off to the Towson State Tigers. Towson winning the toss. I guess when you have four captains, Howard, and Delaware only has one captain and the personage of Greg Robertson, you win the toss. Four Is that how it works? Four captains to one. They sent out Gary Rubling, a defensive back, defensive tackle Pat Murphy, middle guard Don Washington, and their big tight end, Hernando Mahia, they win the toss and Towson State is deploying to receive. That's a pretty big front line that Towson State's going to send out there when they put the ball in play too. And I'm looking at some of these sizes and weights and across the front they go 250, 225, 270, 238 and 280. John Gasson will kick it off for Delaware. And the Hens, at the outset, will have the wind at their back. To the far side is Arnold Roots. To the near side, Greg Rogers to return for Towson State. This is Rogers, one yard deep in the end zone. And smacked hard as he reaches the 25-yard line from one yard deep. Ken Pulaski in on the stop for Delaware. So Towson State coming in with an impressive record, but they have been playing, remember, at a lower level than Division I AA. They are a Division II football team hoping to move up in the next few years to Division I AA. Brett Rogers, number 11, the quarterback. The fullback is number 44, Brian Kirchhoff. The tailback is number 40, Brian O'Neill. The flanker is 26, Sean Murphy. That's O'Neill, and he rides into a sea of blue, Vaughn Dickinson. Vaughn Dickinson was the first one in there, Len. Put a pretty good, pretty good pop on him, and then he got lots of help. No gain on the play for O'Neill, and he's going to come out. New tail back in for Phil Balbert, who runs the... Offensive and defensive show. He's the head coach in his 12th year at Towson State. James McEachin, number 34, now setting up in the tailback spot. Here is McEachin. McEachin slipping through. Rogers, Robertson had a hand on him, but he got away for about six on the play. Out to the 33-yard line. Good speed. McEachin is a junior from Richmond, Virginia. And he's going to come off to the sideline, and O'Neill will shuttle in with the play. McEachin, junior, 5'11", 204 pounder. Brian O'Neill's a double threat, too. He's, he's caught 12 passes for four touchdowns this year, and he's carried the ball 41 times for 133 yards and one touchdown. Third down three from the 32-yard line. Here with the reception is Mike Loons. And he's got Towson State a first down as Rogers drills it. I'll tell you, Rogers is impressive in the fact, Howard, that he spreads his receptions out. Loons coming into the contest had 20 receptions, the leading receiver. The big tight end, Hernando Mejia, you see him right there, number 81. He has caught 11 balls on the year. The, the flanker, Sean Murphy, 26, he has 15 receptions. And as you pointed out, O'Neill has 12 receptions. First and 10, nothing. Kirchhoff is met head up by Greg Robertson, and he is going to lose about a half a step. Greg Robertson had good penetration that time, and he made it pay off. Robertson, the captain of the Blue Hens from Seaford in Delaware. The ball marked down now as 
There's Joe Quig, 19. 55, back in service this week. John Gannon opening at a defensive end position. Gary Cannon spelled him because of injury a week ago. Second down and 11 from the 48-yard line. McEachin, now this is O'Neill. And O'Neill, with not much luck, as Cannon is there. Gannon, that's John Gannon. We've got John Gannon wears 55, and Gary Cannon wears number 84. And number 40 coming to the sideline, just carried the football for Towson State, is Brian O'Neill. Well, we got a definite passing down once again, Lennon. Like you say, you know, he has no favorite target. He uses everybody. Third down, they'll need a long nine from just about at midfield. Rogers big. Not this time. Joe Quigg. Once again. Number 19, Joe Quigg. And Joe knows where to hit those high guys, Howard. He gets them low down around the ankles and then ties them up. And down they go. Joe Quigg, who put on a great show last week against Massachusetts. In fact, he's just played good football week in and week out here in 1983. That's the thing that impresses me about Rodgers. He, he's, if there's such a thing as a mold for quarterbacks, he came out of it. It's 6'4", 210 pounds. Here's Jerome Nolan, a freshman punter, has the football go off his, the side of his foot. It's going to be downed at the 40-yard line of Delaware by Mark Kaufman. A defensive back in with the kicking team in Delaware with the wind at their back will have the football in excellent field position as the defense, having done their job the first time around, trots to the sideline. That's something Delaware hasn't enjoyed very much in the last couple of weeks is good field position when they took possession of the ball, but they're only 60 yards away now, and let's see what they can do. B.J. Webster brings him up. There's Steve Paniakis now setting up tight on the right side. Higher in motion. Not getting the block on the corner that he needed from Reeder, and quickly up to make the stop on him is Alan Argent. Argent is one of four linebackers employed in a 3-4 defense that Towson State uses, and we've got a Tiger already shaken up. But Alan Argent made the hit on that man right there, number 28, Chris Heyer. After Heyer had managed to pick up just uh, a little bit better than one. Chris Heyer, number 28. A little bit about Chris Jr. from Rochester, New York. And down on the ground is Jeff Keen, who is the strong side linebacker. Keen from Timonium in Maryland. Great race. Great racing area. Let's see if we can uh, pick up on our replay here where Keen may have uh, gotten bumped around. He's in a pile there as they all go down a ball away from the ball carrier. Second down and eight for Delaware, just over their own 40-yard line. Dan Reeder picking his way up over the 45-yard line to about the 46. Making the stop on him is Jim Zulik. Dan Reeder continues to lead the Delaware team in rushing. He's carried the ball 66 times this year, and he's picked up 318 yards. Only one touchdown, though, and I'm sure Dan's a little disappointed in that. 99 in our view for just a moment there is weak side linebacker Bob Poist. Third down and four from the 46-yard line for the Hens. Reader. Bumbles the football, and recovering for Towson State is Bubby Hammond. Bubby Hammond. He's one of two inside linebackers, number 39 from not too far away from the Delaware Stadium. Elkton, Maryland's his hometown, Howard. The shame about that play, here we watch it again, as Reeder had the first down and then trying to get more, he got hit the second time and, and that's when he lost the football. Right there now, he's got first down yardage. Now he breaks away and tries to get more and the ball is knocked out of his hands. And Hammond recovers it. For Towson State in Delaware Territory at the 48-yard line. Brian Kirchhoff is the fullback behind Rodgers. Intercepted! Ken Polowski! 
Kenny Pulaski makes the interception, riding him out of bounds for Towson State is Bill Ward, an offensive guard, but that's something that Delaware has not had this season, Howard. That's the interception, and they get it here from number 30, Ken Pulaski. Let's look at it again. It comes at a good time, too. Delaware had just given Towson the ball in, in good field position, and Rodgers had plenty of time. Just overshoots over his intended his receiver. receiver, Sean Murphy. Pulaski returns it to the 47-yard line of Towson State, first and 10. Higher in motion. Webster just scrambling for a couple. Some early heat flushing him out of the pocket. Kelly Raymond has been talking about the fact that B.J. is not using his running ability when he's been around the end. He'll clear the end, but he is still looking for his receivers. He's got to open up his running uh, lanes a little bit better by running with the football. He's got to become a fourth running back, in other words. Once he gets flushed out, he's got to make up his mind that he's, he's going to run with the ball and look for a place to go. Second down and seven, just inside the 45-yard line of Towson, almost slipping. Intercepted! Picking it off in the secondary is Gary Rubling, and Rubling is the all-time intercepting king for the Towson State Tigers. That gives him 16 in his career at Towson State. Another look at it. B.J. just slipping there, but he has time to set up. A little and bit high. A little bit high off the receiver's hands, and there is Rubling from Frederick, Maryland. 15 receptions coming in, now has 16, and he ups his interception record for Towson State. Turnovers here early. Kirchhoff, the fullback, with not much. Well, if you remember, Len, uh, a week ago, B.J. had the same problem. He, he was overthrowing his receivers, and that was the case that time on that interception. Ball was delivered just a little bit too high. Kirchhoff on the sideline or on that previous carry picks up a little bit of yardage about one to the 41 yard line that's loon split to the top of the screen quig and he's got him two sacks already first quarter action for joe quig bill bailey's on the sideline again with us this weekend at delaware stadium bill Len, the Delaware defense is playing with only three down linemen, and they're playing with five defensive backs. That might help set up that last interception by Kenny Pulaski. And then the turnover, as Delaware gave it right back on the interception by Rubling. But the loss here as Quigg tracks down Rodgers behind the line of scrimmage, back inside the 35, all the way to the 33. Third down and 17. That is Murphy in motion. O'Neal, and O'Neal will get the football out close to the 35-yard line. And the punting unit for Towson State will come on. Vaughn Dickinson made the stop on Brian O'Neal, the tailback. Just a little swing pass. That's a strange call in that situation, right? Well, I think they were just trying to get his speed, utilize some speed to the outside, but the Delaware defense, Vaughn Dickinson right there, Jerome Nolan, Punning into the wind. Punning into the wind. They're coming, but they don't get there. Campbell, he's down at the 33-yard line, and Joe Quigg, back up field, is just distraught that he did not get there as Nolan got the low snap from center. Joe Campbell trotting off. I'll tell you, Quigg didn't miss it by much. No, he didn't. He in fact, was in the area. He may have overrun it. That will happen sometimes when you've got uh, just too much of a free lane to the punter. First and 10 for Delaware. We're moving quickly here in the first quarter. No score. First and 10 for their own 32-yard line. We've had three turnovers, two by the Hens, one by Towson State. Reader, as they stack him, they'll use a 3-4 defense. And let's identify the starting defensive people for Towson State. The middle guard is number 90, Don Washington. 54, Pat Murphy at one defensive tackle spot. Sheldon Nelson is at the other defensive tackle position. Guy Darienzo, number 21, checking into the Delaware offense. And they'll utilize four 
backers, a 3-4 pro-style defense. Second down and nine from the 34. Webster under pressure, throws it, putting the heat on him and getting him just as he unloaded was Jim Zulik. DJ did good to get that ball away. Zulik, number 55, putting pressure on Webster. He saved the hens about five or six yards by getting rid of the ball that time. Zulik is from Laurel, Maryland. He's a junior linebacker. Third down and nine from the 34-yard line. This is Delaware shifting with Pontiacus now setting up tight to the far side. Hammonds puts into the near side. Kaysan. But they're looking for Kaysan. Turning it back in very nicely it was Jason Grooms, the cornerback on the left side, and Delaware will have to punt the football away. I don't think we should be too surprised by the defensive effort that uh, Towson State is putting forth here this afternoon. They've got three shutouts in five games to their credit this year. Mike Anderson drops back to punt for Delaware. Single safety is Mark Kaufman. Kaufman at the 25, 30, and out over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Nice return by Mark Kaufman. He's the strong safety on defense and goes back to return punts from Parkville in Maryland. And they will spot the football at the 38-yard line. Let's identify our officials, the referee in the white hat, Joseph Shirk, the umpire Harry Weber, the linesman, Frederick DiGenova. William Riley is the line judge. Joseph Donnelly, the field judge. The back judge is George Waugh. The clock operator is George Crowther. First and 10, Towson State. First quarter action. They draw to Kirchhoff, and he butts heads, and down he goes. He butted heads first with Vaughn Dickinson, and then slid off in Jeff Haldenshield. Finally... Induces Kirchhoff, hard-nosed fullback. Jeff Howdenshield, by the way, is our birthday boy this week. He was 21 on Friday. Kirchhoff is a sophomore. He didn't play last year. Two years ago, he played as a freshman, set out last year with an ankle injury. He is their leading ground gainer with better than 327 yards coming into the contest. This is Murphy, first down, up at the 49-yard line. Sean Murphy. 15 receptions coming in with 194 yards and a couple of scores. He is from Westfield in New Jersey. First down for Towson. As Murphy now will flank to the far side. Towson at its own 49-yard line. First down pass completion. Mahia, the big tight end, is the intended receiver. Massachusetts brought in Gary Fraker a week ago, and he had size, but nothing like this guy. Well, close to it, but Mejia is a little bit bigger. He's from Jamaica, New York now, originally from Houston, Texas. But boy, does he have size. Uh, he would have been out of bounds even if he had caught that ball, and it, it was a little overthrown. He was pretty well covered also. Six foot four, there is Jim Pulaski, one of the two Pulaski twins. Playing in the defensive secondary for the Hens. Second down and 10. Murphy in motion coming back toward the line of scrimmage. Kirchhoff, not much. They had trouble running the football against Delaware a year ago and had to resort to an air game. And Delaware picked off seven on that day as Joe Anderson was the quarterback at that time for Towson State and they want to keep Delaware just a little bit more honest this time around Howard. Well they certainly got the offense to do it Len. They put some points on the board this year. Uh, 60 points in their first game then 13 then 28 and then 23 and then 48 last week against Morgan State. So they're no strangers to the end zone. Third down and 10 at their own 49. Gary Cannon putting the heat on, but the reception is taken in nicely here on the sideline. That's Mike Loons. He's the wide receiver. Loons from Westminster in Maryland. Senior at 6'3", 197 pounds. Rogers found him. He got in between the two defenders very nicely. Just before Cannon, Gary Cannon unloaded on him. Right over Harris's head. 
And Towson driving. First and 10 at the Delaware 22-yard line. Make it the 21-yard line. Here's a little pushing on the sideline, and a flag is going to go down, and it's going to go against Towson State. Coming out of the backfield was Brian O'Neill, number 40, the tailback, and he did a little pushing off here on the side. Referee Joseph Shirt. Oh, it's against Delaware. Delaware. Well, I'll tell you, Howard, I was watching the play, and Loons, O'Neill actually had no chance whatsoever. That's, that's what's aggravating about that, that, that kind of a penalty. There was no possible way the, the play was going to be completed. Well, just remind me uh, from uh, now on in the future, don't call it ahead <laughs> of the guy in the white hat. First down with the penalty at the 13-yard line. McEachin now in at the tailback spot. O'Neill is out. Loons, wide receiver to the far side. They're going to give it to McEachin. He'll be stacked right around the 11-yard line. They just pile him up, do the hens. Defensively for Delaware across the front. Vaughn Dickinson is number 87. There's 58, Sean Riley. 97 is Charlie Bryce. We saw Bryce as a starter last week. He's a sophomore from Reading, Pennsylvania. Delaware also utilizing Jeff Howdenshield at a defensive tackle position. John Gannon had been in, but he is out now, and Cannon, number 84, is replacing Gannon. Second down and eight. Nothing. O'Neill just rides into a stack. Gary Cannon, 84, Howden Shield, 99, 87, Vaughn Dickinson. On the last two running plays, Len, uh, if you want to know who made the tackle, you could almost take your pick of anybody on the field for Delaware. And here is Kirchhoff trying to do some blocking. He is shaking on the play. And will have to come off. He'll be replaced by Scott Wilkins, number 31. And now Rogers says we want a timeout. The clock will stop with three minutes, 26 seconds. Jeff Howdenshield from Factoryville, Pennsylvania. 99 is his number, and he's got that size, 6'3", 235 pounds. Rogers here on the sideline talking things over with head coach Phil Albert. They call the offense at Towson State Air Albert. Air Albert. Air Albert. He likes to put the football in the air. They certainly as you does, indicated, so. uh, they've done well this season, averaging 33 points of all game. Toby Raymond looking on. Bill Maley on the sideline, Bill. Toby Raymond on the sideline across the way. Mentioned Bill Maley is on the sideline for us. Uh, he is not, however, on the Delaware side of the field. But he is on our side of the field. Towson State, Bill, are you there? Quarterback Brett Rogers is doing a fine job bringing Towson downfield right now. He's going to get the 50 mile an hour headwind and double coverage a lot, yet he's still completing his passes. And you can hear that uh, headwind uh, blowing into Bill Maley's microphone. Thank you, Bill. Third down and seven with Murphy flanking to the far side. Loons, the wide receiver into the near side from just outside the Delaware 10-yard line. Here comes Quigg, can't get there. Battle away nicely. Jimmy Pulaski knocks it away. The intended receiver was O'Neill, number 40, out of the backfield. Joe Quigg almost had his third sack of the quarter. Look, here he comes, bites off the block. He's there about a second too late. And Jim Pulaski is there right on time. That was a great play by Pulaski also. That was six points. And Jerome Nolan is going to set up and try a 28-yard field goal attempt with Loons holding. He will be kicking into a stiff wind. Gets it up, and it comes off to the near side. He had the distance. Plenty of distance. I was watching him warming up, and he was... Uh, Kicking him from between 40 and 45 yards, and he had, he, you know, he had plenty of distance then. So it was just a matter of getting the ball between the uprights, which so, he didn't do. So the longest 
Drive of the first quarter is shut off by Delaware, and Nolan's field goal try of 28 yards is uh, off wide to the right. Let home quest, Howard Kessner. SpectraVision bringing you University of Delaware football from Delaware Stadium, and we'll be here again next week. The Temple Owls will come calling. Reader carrying, and he carried Bob Poist, big number 99, down with him. Poist from Sykesville, Maryland. Danny Reader, of course, uh, I'm sure that most of you know about him. He's from Christiana High School. First went off to Boston College, but decided to come home to play. Last year, picked up just under 800 yards, and off to a sluggish start this year, has been hampered by injuries. Second down and seven from the Delaware 23. This is Kaysan in motion to the near side. Now he sets up. Now he should have run with it. Higher, knocked away at the last second. Good defensive Boy. positioning by Jason Grooms, number Great 24. Timing. Great timing on that defense. If he's there a half a second earlier, it's interference. If he's there a half a second later, it's six points. But uh, Webster had had a lot of open field in front of him that time. I guess he just felt he could complete the pass. We have a Tiger shaken up. Unable to identify him at this time. That was a second down call on the long pass play. Broke it up very nicely. I mentioned uh, Temple coming uh, a calling next week. They are playing at home against East Carolina this weekend. And have a, there's B.J. Webster. B.J., uh, his air show the last two weeks has not been much of a show after early season good form. He has uh, gone to bad form the last two weeks. I don't know whether it's because he's got such a brisk wind behind him today, but last week especially, he was... He was overthrowing the ball almost every play, except for the one, the touchdown drive, you know, that Delaware scored the winning touchdown there in the last couple of minutes of the game. He was near perfect in that drive. And he got a great reception from Guy Darienzo. Here's he, here's the overthrow as a little bit of pressure was coming on Webster that time with a third down call. Case on the antenna receiver, but over his head. And Delaware will send Mike Anderson on to punt. Twin safeties this time for Towson to the far side, Jim Ladowski and Kaufman. Mark Kaufman to the near side. Anderson averaging 34.3. And this one's off the side of his foot. And he's going to have to get a roll, but does not get a roll. And Towson will have football. The football in Delaware territory quickly downfield to down that football was John Fritz. Now remember the story about Fritz. There he is, 53. He'll go off to the sideline. Let's see if he puts on number 13. He's a reserve quarterback. Where's number 13 if they use him as a quarterback? Right. But has to put on that lineman's jersey, 53, to snap the long on the long punts. No score as we move inside the two and a half minute mark. First quarter action here at Delaware Stadium. Loons into the near sideline. Let's see if Kirchhoff is back in there. This is going to be O'Neill. Kirchhoff is out. He was shaken the last time Towson had the football. Sean Riley made the tackle that time. O'Neill coming to the sideline now after about a three-yard pickup to the 46-yard line. He'll be replaced by Jim McEachin. McEachin seems to have a quicker feet. I guess that's the way to describe it. Big, strong Brett Rogers, the quarterback, six foot four, 210 pounder. McEachin. And sliding in nicely, linebacker Greg Robertson puts the hit on McEachin, and down he goes. There was a great block, a great block that time by the tight end, Mahia. Hernando Mahia and. Uh, because Hernando is so long and so cumbersome around Towson State Campus, they just call him H. Rogers, third down. Slipping down as he takes the reception is O'Neill out of the backfield, the tailback. And that got Delaware the football back. The fact that he slipped. Had he not slipped, he would have had the first down yardage. And Jerome Nolan will come on to punt again. He'll punt, of course, into the wind. 
He missed a 28-yard field goal attempt. Delaware will come with 10 men, only a single safety, Joe Nolan. Let's see if Joe Quigg gets close. They almost get there. Flag goes down as Campbell signals for a fair catch inside the 15, and this time Nolan did go down. He went down the last time also, but there was no call. But there were two or three blue hens bearing in on him as he punted away, got it off, but was hit and went down. And now will we have running into the kicker five yards or roughing the kicker 15 yards? That's the decision. Either way, it's going to give Towson State a first down. Referee Joseph Shirk. It's the big one. 15 yards, putting the football down at the Delaware 28-yard line. Inside the final 30 seconds of the first quarter. And a rather familiar beginning as far as Delaware's offense is concerned, Howard. Sluggish again. Rogers had his arm hit. Murphy. And he dances to the 10-yard line. Sean Murphy. And Sean Riley had to knock him off his feet. Sean Murphy with a fine reception. Rogers had his arm hit just as he unloaded the football. But he's strong, remember, at 6'4", 210 pounds. He's from Woodbridge in Virginia. I uh, couldn't see who knocked the, who hit his arm. Somebody hit his arm, but he had plenty of zip on the ball. That was, what a, that was a great move. Murphy with some... Let home quest with Howard Gesner, ready to begin second quarter action here at the University of Delaware Stadium. Towson with a first and ten just outside the Delaware 10-yard line, and this is McEachin. But the Delaware front wall on defense is... Vaughn Dickinson led the way on that tackle also. Dickinson, well, coming into uh, the 1983 season, that was one of Delaware's major concerns, rebuilding that front wall. And for the most part, as McEachin trots off, Delaware's front four, Vaughn Dickinson, Charles Bryce, Eric Leakes, they switch. Jeff Houdenshield, John Cannon, or Gary Cannon. They've done the job. Second down and nine. Here's the pass. Is it caught? No reception. Loons diving for it. Flag went down as the play evolved. Loons made the dive for it. He's lanky at 6'3", 197 pounds. 20, 20 receptions. Let's three touchdowns. Look Another look at it. Rogers getting good uh, blocking. Time. Evidently, uh, somebody uh, doing that good blocking. Uh, his knee was on the ground before the ball got there. And he actually looked like he was probably out of bounds by a half a step. The discussion is with Delaware. And the hands are going to take the penalty. Illegal motion. Well, it wasn't blocking at all. It was an illegal motion before or just as the ball was snapped. That'll put the football back at the 15-yard line. And bring up a second down and 14 for Towson State's Tigers. Riddled by Delaware a year ago here at the stadium in Newark. 51 to 7, but it looks like a different ball club. Sean Riley, number 58, Sean Riley, as the sack attack comes alive for the Hens. That's three so far this afternoon, and we're less than a minute into the second quarter. Two by Joe Quigg, one by Riley, and Quigg almost had himself another one also. Well, somewhere in the huddle, Quigg probably said, well, Greg uh, Robertson, uh, Sean Riley, I've got two. Uh, it's time for you guys turn. to get into the act. Rogers, he's got that great size, but uh, Riley's got his own size, remember? Riley goes six foot, 208, third down from just inside the 25 yard line. Rogers with all day, intercepted. Joe Quigg. Joe said, I'm tired of sacks. I think I'll just lay back here and intercept me one. Joe Quigg steps in front. 
Rodgers' intended receiver. And he had all day. Yes, he did. Lots of time. O'Neal was the intended receiver. He ended up being tackler. As Quigg makes the interception just outside the 11-yard line. That's a good job by the Delaware defense that time. Higher. He slides around his own left end for about a quick four. Chris Heyer, I love to watch him catch the football. Hasn't had a whole lot of success running the football. He only has 88 yards on 18 carries. But his receiving ability, I'll never forget that catch that he made at William & Mary falling down in the end zone. That was just a thing of beauty. And he has seven receptions for better than 145 yards. That is a uh, rather nice 20.7 average. Second down and six from the 15. Reader, he slips down. Had rain uh, Wednesday and Thursday. It made uh, the grass here at the stadium uh, a lot greener, Howard. It made but, it a lot uh, slicker. Uh, a little bit slicker as well. You can, you can see where that last play took place where the players had dug divots out of the out of the turf. So it must be pretty, the footing must be pretty soft. There has been some slipping this afternoon. Yeah, if we get a good shot as Delaware comes out, you can see the uh, divots. Danny Reeder, third down and four. Webster, intercepted by Rogers. That is Greg Rogers stepping in front of Hammond, and Towson State is on the board first. That was a timing play on defense. Greg Rogers, number two. Watch, here we go. He, he's not even in the picture until the ball gets there. Steps right up in from front of Hammond, and he's gone the other way as Hammond goes down. And Nolan will come on to try the extra point placement. Craig Rogers congratulating on the sideline. He is 5'9", 175 pounds from Baltimore, Maryland. Didn't have to travel too far to go to school. Nolan, he kicks it. And it is good, and Towson State, as Sean Riley's a little slow getting up for the Blue Hens, Towson State strikes first. But they didn't do it uh, via their vaunted offense. They did it via their vaunted, vaunted defense. defense. Right, <laughs> exactly. 18-yard interception return on the TD for Greg Rogers. Well, you hate, you hate to sound like a broken record, Len, but that's three turnovers already this afternoon for Delaware. And you just can't give the other team the ball that many times. Well, they had nine against Westchester in an opening loss. But Towson leads it at seven to nothing here. Second quarter action with under 12 minutes. They also had seven in the loss to Lehigh. Remaining to be played, they did. 16 in two games. Well, it's, it's, been, the, it's been the story for six weeks, actually, Howard, turning the football over. And this is a Towson team that is ranked 10th in the nation in Division II. And their passer, Brett Rogers, who has uh, shown some signs of being able to crack Delaware's defense, is the top-rated passer in Division II. Well, the thing he's done so far this afternoon that impresses me almost as much as his ability to get the ball to his receivers is he knows when to dump the ball off. Uh, throw the ball out of bounds when you know when the players are covered he tries to make sure there's no interception higher at the five and they just pile everything up to the tigers Towson state striking first here as chris higher adjusts his helmet the delaware i guess they still call them the bomb squad members don't they and we have a new quarterback in for Delaware, John Spar. You'll remember John. He started the season as the number one signal caller when he couldn't do the job against Westchester. B.J. Webster came on, but Webster's not doing the job right now, and Spar is back in. 
Reader on the carry. One of the first to hit him was Mark Kaufman. Also in there, big number 91, Dan Slanitsky. John Sparr comes into the game having only thrown 14 passes this year. Six of them were completed. He also has two interceptions. I was going to add, uh, he has eight, inter eight completions, but two of them to the wrong colored jersey. We had a flag down, a very late flag. It's going to go against Delaware. A little bit of a referee's meeting. Well, that's going to be holding, meeting. I believe. Holding. What it is. Against Delaware. And the clock runs. Towson State leading here at 7-0. 18-yard interception return of a pass by Greg Rogers. Delaware now facing a first down and 20 from their own nine-yard line as they shuffle around on offense. Higher, and Rogers has got him. Rogers, yeah, he's happy. He's got he Chris Higher. He wasn't fooled by that play at all. Delaware just unable to sweep the ends as Rogers and uh, his counterpart on the other side, number 24, Jason Grooms, have done a good job here early going against Delaware. A loss of maybe uh, a half yard on the play. We'll call it second down and 20. Now Paniakis will set up Tate on the right side, and Hammond splits to the far side. Kaysan inside. A little bit of daylight before he is knocked off his feet. Jason Grooms makes the tackle on him, sliding over from the cornerback spot. Kaysan, the Villanova transfer. Steve Pontiacos was leading the way for Kaysan that time. Well, that's what a big, strong tight end is supposed to do. He's going to come out, by the way, now and be supplanted in the offensive front by Tim Sager at tight end. Third down and 14 from the 14-yard line for the Hens. Spar! He is out close to the 25-yard line. That will still leave Delaware short. Some uh, three to four yards of a first down. And Delaware will punt it away. Spar trots to the sideline, and Mike Anderson will come on. He'll kick into a stiff breeze. And it is dying into that stiff breeze, and now here it's going to take a Towson State roll backwards in the hens. Finally, jump on the football. Down at the 35-yard line. Towson stayed with great field position, leading Delaware here at 7 to nothing. And they've got a good chance right here to add to that point total. Excellent field position. And Rodgers will be operating with the wind at his back. Senior quarterback who had to wait in the wings while Joe Anderson performed for a couple of years. Oh, a little trickery. Rogers going long. Loons has the reception with a diving grab at the 21-yard line. Mike Loons. That's the old flea flicker. But we have a flag down way back upfield, and it's going to go against Towson State and wipe out the long gainer. The type of play they were running, it's probably a motion penalty. Well, you know, uh, Towson is near Baltimore. Here's the, uh, this is, uh, we've seen this most recently from the Washington Redskins. Joe Theismann likes to use it with John Riggins, and then they throw it downfield. They usually go for a little longer yardage, but the this penalty one. penalty came on the block that was thrown that enabled that <laughs> Rodgers to get that pass off. Clipping call is the call. And you could see it clearly on the replay. Places the football down at the Towson 40-yard line. 
And it will be first down as number 34 trots into the huddle. That's the amount of yardage the Tigers will need. 34 yards, first and 34 from their own 40. Loons and Murphy, twin receivers to the near side. McEachin, not much. Quig is there. Mike Harris is there. Robertson almost had him in the backfield. Yeah, Robertson uh, kind of slipped off him, but Quig and Harris were both there. The fullback right now for Towson is 31, Scott Wilkins. Remember uh, in the first quarter, we had Kirchhoff get injured, and he's been on the sideline ever since. Scott Wilkins is only a freshman. Pretty good size, though, 5'11", 210. Tell you an interesting story about these two in a moment. Kirchhoff, and here is Wilkins, and he runs uh, to midfield. But Wilkins is a freshman. His high school is in Severna Park, Maryland. The young fellow that he replaced, Brian Kirchhoff, off injured, his high school was in Severna Park, Maryland. They both went to the same high school, but at different times, about three or four years apart. Third and 24. Rogers loons, and he is diving short of a first down here at the 31-yard line. We have a flag thrown as... I think it's going to be a, we had an a, late, over, a late call on uh, Towson. We had an over-eager Tiger trying to do some downstate, uh, downstream <laughs> blocking, uh, downfield blocking. Let's take another look. Rogers did a good job after he got out of the pocket of finding an open receiver. You know, they were, uh, they were complaining about, and he was very close to the line of scrimmage also, but they were complaining at uh, Towson State about uh, his Here we go. immobility. Now the play is dead, and look at this. Oh, we didn't continue it, okay. I think Joe Quigg is the one who took the shot that's going to cost Towson State, but the receiver loons is still down. Towson State first came on the Delaware schedule last year, but the university itself has been around for a while. Founded in 1866 as the premier teaching training school in the state of Maryland. They've got a beautiful campus too, Len. I don't know if you've ever been down there. About 9,500 full-time students, another 5,000 part-time students, and another 1,400 in graduate studies. And being located in Maryland, it goes without saying that they have an outstanding lacrosse team. Fourth down will be upcoming. Oh, we've got offsetting penalties. We have offsetting penalties, and they took place after the reception was made, after the receiver was down, and that's why the ball will be spotted at the 31-yard line. Fourth down and four. I think Towson will go for it. No, they're not. They're sending the punter in. Nolan, he is not only their punter, he is their field goal kicker, but he is going to set up this time to punt. Maybe. Wouldn't surprise me to see them fake here. That's true, because remember, Towson is uh, an underdog, heavily, a heavy underdog to Delaware, and why not? But they are going to punt. And he's not going to get what he wanted. Nolan trying to angle for the corner. He's a freshman, Nolan is. Uh, it's about the 15, 16 yard line. You'll probably remember uh, the former punter and kicker for uh, Towson State when I bring you his name, Sean Landetta. We remember him from the United States Football League and the Philadelphia Stars. Did a good job for him. Yes, he did. Did a good job for Towson, too. Yeah, as all their punting and kicking records, the name Landetta sprinkled throughout the record book at Towson State. John Spar runs Delaware's offense from the 15-yard line. Spar spinning up to around the 20 and crosses the 20-yard line. 
Spar has some size to him. 6'3", 197 pounds. Cherry Hill, New Jersey, his home. Bill Bailey on the sideline. Your observations, Bill. That first play of the series typifies what we're going to see the rest of the game. The option with John Spar. He, he can run the ball, which B.J. Webster cannot. I think Tubby's going to take advantage of that. Here is the give and standing him up. Reader is stood straight up. Bubby Hammond, 39. Bubby Hammond from Elkton, Maryland, just down the road from Delaware Stadium. Bubby Hammond put the kind of tackle on that time that also says, and don't come into my part of the field anymore. He's a senior, 6'1", 215 pounds, and he was Mr. Everything when he played high school football at Elkton. And he is going to be 21 years old on New Year's Eve. Pariakis sets up tight right, third down and four for Delaware. And now a flag as the Hens in setting up offensively take too much time. Delay of game costing Delaware five yards. Referee Joseph Shirk steps it off. Tim Sager checks into the Delaware huddle, number 82. Replacing Steve Pontiacus. That's a tight end. Third down and nine. Quezon in motion. Reader. Kaufman knocks him off his feet. Great second effort by Dan Reeder. Got a first down for Delaware. Danny Reeder. Slowed by injuries, but still Delaware's number one ball carrier. Yeah, take another look at it now. He, by all rights, he should have been stopped short of the first down. Well, Washington, right there. Washington misses him. Kaufman... Uh, Finally does the job on him, but Reeder keeps his balance enough for a first down out at the 27-yard line, first and 10. Spar fumbling the football. And Howard, 53, comes up with it. And Alan Argent has the fumble recovery. Spar getting himself hemmed in. And has the ball knocked away, and here is Towson State. Here we go. Take another look. Spar. Uh, he didn't get. Bob Poist got the first shot at him, and then the ball comes free. And Argent, the junior from Davidson in Maryland, makes the recovery for Towson. First and 10, Towson at the Delaware 21-yard line, and Towson leading here with five and a half minutes before halftime at seven to nothing. 18-yard interception return by Greg Rogers as O'Neill carries and doesn't gain much. But this is Towson State, remember, a year ago blown out by the Blue Hens, 51 to seven, but that's a long time ago. That's true, but you also have to remember that uh, last year's game was only 15 to seven at the half. And then there were some quick turnovers and uh, a couple of quick interceptions. A couple of uh, minutes in the third quarter, and Towson State found itself way down, and they played a lot of people, according to Coach Phil Albert after that, and that's probably why you had the big final score. Rodgers. Going down. John Gannon. Wrapping him around the ankles, locking him, and not letting go. And the hands happy to have him back, although... Gary Cannon did a great job a week ago, came up with two key defensive plays as Massachusetts was driving for what would have been a winning score. Rodgers has the time, can't find anybody, and then here, with the ankles locked, is Gannon. That's the fourth sack for Delaware this afternoon. Third down and 16 at the 27. Rodgers, Murphy, overthrown again. Uh, he would have been out of bounds anyway, Len. Jimmy Newfrock covering 
Sean Murphy, he'll come to the sideline. We have a flag down. This one's going to go against Delaware. Looking on the sidelines, there's Phil Albert in the sweater. He's giving a little directions to one of his ball players that about his pass good. route. That was a pretty good pass into the wind. Bill Maley on the sideline with us for another Saturday. Bill, what have you seen so far here in the second quarter? Well, I heard a reference made that uh, someone stated that this looked a little, little bit like last year's uh, Towson game, close at halftime. There's one big difference. Last year at this time, Delaware rolled up 300 yards in offense, but just couldn't push it in. This year, they're not even moving the ball past the 30-yard line. 507 yards is what Delaware did against Towson in the 51-7 win a year ago, and your comments are well taken. Bill Maley on the sideline. Delaware's offense turned it over with a fumble by Dan Reeder, turned it over twice on pass interceptions, and one of them went for a score, 18 yards by Greg Rogers. First down and 10 as Delaware is hit with the penalty from the 17-yard line. Rogers unloading out of the end zone. The intended receiver was sitting in the second row. <laughs> Actually, it was Don Danley. Now, let's just say he was the closest to the ball. Right, 46 Don Danley, the backup wide receiver, was running in the end zone, but had plenty of company. And Rogers shows us his strong arm. Number one passer in Division Two came in with just under 920 yards in the first five ball games, 14 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Here's the draw. Wilkins and Kenny Pulaski plays it real nice. He did a good job. He, he didn't go for any of the fakes. He stayed right with him. So Delaware's defense uh, getting tested here quite a bit in the second quarter. It seems like Delaware's defense has been on the field the entire second quarter. And they're doing the job. Wilkins, he's a freshman. And Pulaski goes for him low and wraps him up here at the 16-yard line. Third down and eight. Delaware is sending its backers, and Rogers throws it away. Intended for Danley. And Danley will come to the sideline Jerome Nolan's going to come on number seven he's counting back the stripes Kaufman's going to hold for him be a 38 yard attempt with the wind at his back 33 yard excuse me as Barry Cohen rather belatedly sets up to block 33 yard field goal attempt it's down it's hit, but it's off this time to the left. So he's missed once to the right against the wind and misses to the left, kicking with the wind at his back. That is Jerome Nolan. We hold our score at 7 0 here at the University of Delaware. Bill Bailey on the sideline. Bill. Delaware defense keeps coming up with a big play. The offense is turning the ball over, but the defense is shutting them down. They're getting a little lucky with uh, missed field goals, but still that's part of the game. They're doing the job. And B.J. Webster rejoins the Delaware huddle. He'll take over on offense. Tubby had him on the sideline for a good four or five minutes. Ted Kemsky probably uh, had a chance to talk to him a little bit. He undershoots higher here on the near sideline. Webster, after doing such a great job against Westchester in a losing effort, rallying Delaware, but coming up short, led him to victories over William and Mary and Pennsylvania, and he was a real aerial threat, but then against Lehigh, interceptions, and last week, not a good day throwing the ball for E.J. Webster. Same thing's happening today. Second down, Webster under heat, and down he goes. Bob Poist has got him. Number 99 from Sykesville, Maryland, the senior weak side linebacker. He didn't look too weak on that one. 6'2", 210-pounder, he blows in there, and Webster goes down, and Delaware will face a third and 20 
from their own 10 yard line and I have a feeling that Delaware would like to see that clock run it's down to 234 they'd like to go in just down by seven here at halftime there is Poist finishing off B.J. Webster higher in motion Reader the white shirts are converging on him and down he goes heading up the defense strong side linebacker Jeff Keen and Delaware will punt into the wind as Reader adjusts the equipment. Dan Reader from Christiana High School, a junior here at Delaware as far as football eligibility is concerned. Kaufman standing back at the 40-yard line, and the wind is going to kill this punt, but it's going to take a Delaware roll, and Kaufman, as you saw, he pushes his return mate, Jim Ladowski, away, telling him, ah, oh, let it go, let it go. We're going to have know. great field position no matter what. You never know what's going to happen to that ball once it hits the ground. Now the wind definitely held it up. And then when it hit, it took a Delaware roll for about 10 to 12 yards. But Towson will have one minute and 36 seconds in which to operate here before halftime. And they lead heavily favored Delaware at 7 0. 136 till halftime. Loons and Murphy both to the far side. From the Delaware 48, this is Wilkins. And flag. Wilkins finds a little running room as a flag goes down. Wilkins wrapped up by Vaughn Dickinson. Wilkins, a freshman, 5'11", 210 pounds. Playing in reserve are the injured Brian Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff injured while trying to block early in the first quarter. Personal foul against Towson State. Let's take a look. See if we can see the holding. Now it may have uh, occurred on Jeff Howden's shield because he made a lunge for the ball carry and it looked like he went down rather quickly. Personal, Personal foul, foul against Towson. That will march the football back to Towson's 43 yard line. And the clock running at 122, 121, 120. Towson State looking for something long here. O'Neill. And he's got what they lost on the penalty as he penetrates to the Delaware 48-yard line. Hard running Brian O'Neill, the junior from Marlton, New Jersey. I think Towson is trying to lull Delaware into thinking that they're going to run the clock out. Uh, be content to go into the locker room with a 7 nothing lead. Uh, if not on this play, I think on the third down play, you can look for look for the bomb. Let's look for number 81, Hernando Mejia, tight end at the top of the screen. Here it is. Let's see if Rogers is looking for him. Loons is the receiver, and he's got the football inside the Delaware 40. Mike Loons, another fine diving reception for Loons. And he's got the first down also. And Towson is going to take a timeout and have Rogers come to the sideline to talk with head coach Bill Albert. Towson has been impressive, both offensively, although they have not scored offensively, and defensively. Their defense has just done the job. Here is Loons on the reception. And that's not an easy catch to make. No, it is. Remember, he's turning around and coming back for the football. The, the feet have to stay, and the grass is a little bit slick here on the sidelines. Thanks to the midweek rain, Phil Albert in his 20... A 12th season as the head coach at Towson State. He's done a good job. He came in, and in his first year, they went one and nine. And the worst that they have done since then is four and four. That was in his second year. Bill Maley on the sideline. He is right close to where Delaware is setting up defensively, Bill. I can't emphasize the job this defense is doing. They're playing... They're playing with a third different defensive secondary in three weeks. They've got different guys in there each week, yet, yet they're still doing the job. Uh, the defense they're using is the same one they used in Louisiana Tech last year, so it's a good day. Rodgers 
And down he goes. This will be a collaboration between Cannon and Dickinson, the two defensive ends, and Towson State again will quickly ask for a timeout. And like Bill Maley said, the defensive secondary doing their job again there. Rogers had the time, but he couldn't find anyone open, and eventually that time runs out on you, and that's what happened to him there. Well, he had uh, Eric Havoc starting a week ago in the defensive secondary, but he's out because of injury. Rogers has now been sacked five times for 33 yards. And he'll talk it over. I'm just wondering with the wind at the back of the kicker, I'm wondering what Nolan's distance is. Uh, Howard, I know you well, had an eye on him in pregame activity. And he was kicking into the wind. Bill Bailey has... Uh, joined us for today's activity. We've heard from him uh, a number of times. Bill, you played uh, in the defensive secondary. It's late in the first half. He knows Rodgers can go long. We're going to hear from Bill in just uh, a little while. Ball at the 40-yard line. Second down and 12 for Towson. Loons and Murphy, double receivers to the far side. Mejia is the tight end set up here on the near side. Now Murphy coming in toward the huddle. Rogers, Murphy, oh out my. of his hands. Oh, he holds his helmet. He knows he should have had it. That, well, you can't say because he's missed two field goal attempts already, but that would have put Towson in field goal territory. Absolutely. In fact, uh, with the clock no, now showing 21 seconds, they would have had some more time. They would have had the ball deep in Delaware's territory, at least time for a couple of plays before they would have had to bring on a field goal right. kicker, and who's know what, who knows what would have happened in those two plays. Third down and 12 from the 40. I know Rodgers would like to get a little bit closer for Nolan. Linebacker blitz, and they've Number got six. him. He fumbles the football. And they are going to recover, are the Tigers? Jumping on the football as it's kicked center. around is center Stan Eisenhuth. And he's got great size, Eisenhuth. He's a sophomore, 6'6", 270, from Howard, Pennsylvania, out near Pittsburgh. But Rodgers, under a tremendous pressure, on the short end of a 7 0 count to upstart Towson State University from nearby Towson, Maryland. Delaware Quezon, near side, higher, far side. Nolan kicks off, and here we go into the third quarter. We've got some interesting statistics to pass your way in just a moment or two. John Quezon diving out over the 25-yard line, and the Hens will come on on offense, and there has been little offense for the Hens so far in this contest, Howard. I'll tell you, the first half statistics, uh, it's even worse than what we thought. Total offense for Delaware, 33 yards. It was all rushing. Delaware was 0 for 6 in passing in the first half with the two interceptions. B.J. Webster is on the sideline to start the third quarter, and John Spar is running Delaware's offense from their own 26-yard line. Reeder has the ball pop free. Towson State has recovered. The football grabbed by number 39, Bubby Hammond, the inside linebacker, one of two inside linebackers utilized by the Tigers, and Reeder on first down to start the second half. Yet another turnover for the Hens. I counted four in the first half, that's, two that's, pass interceptions, two fumbles. Right. And, and I that's, believe that's uh, Hammond's second uh, fumble recovery this afternoon. And I know that's Reeder's second fumble of our contest. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. O'Neal, he oh. has the ball just bounce free. Oh. And Delaware is going to recover the football. That ball just bounced a good six to eight feet in the air as O'Neal took it into the line. And uh, Delaware gets the quick turnover. We had a quick change of, uh, of the uh, possessions. Yeah, let's take a look and see. It looked to me like it might have been somebody stuck him with a help. No, it was a hand. Somebody got a hand in there. 
And no Sean one. Riley is diving for it. He's not able to bring it in. He broke it free, though. <laughs> Spar, Delaware. He hits his receiver. That's higher, and he is upended. And the ball comes free, and Towson State has got it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We have had three plays here in the third quarter and three turnovers. First, Reeder, then O'Neill, and now Hire, and Towson State gets it right back. I got to tell you, Hire was stuck pretty good, though. Uh, that, well, I can't say I can see why he fumbled the ball, but he has got an excuse. He took a pretty good lick. My, my. At the 39-yard line, their own 39-yard line this time is where Towson State will operate. And let's see if someone can hold on to the football. This is reserve fullback Wilkins, and he finally does hold on to the football. No fumble on that play as Wilkins picks up good yardage, about five. He's the freshman from Severna Park, Maryland, playing behind Brian Kirchhoff, the leading rusher for Towson State, coming in against Delaware, injured in the first quarter, and he hasn't been back. I like this freshman Wilkins. He's a good runner. He's going to do some things at Towson before he leaves there in four years. Tyrone Jones is now in the Delaware defensive secondary, second down and five from the 43. This is Wilkins again, and he just strong legs it Boy. up near midfield for a first down. Wilkins with good leg drive, getting the last two or three yards. 22 for Delaware is Tyrone Jones. He's a sophomore from Bristol, Pennsylvania. Number 31 for Towson State from Severna Park, Maryland, giving the Tigers a first down right short of midfield. That's their eighth first down of the game, Len. Uh, conversely, Delaware has only got one. And that one came early, way early. Brett Rogers is the quarterback. First and 10 from the 49. Rogers, who had better than 100 yards passing in the first half, has it go out of bounds on him here, intending it for Sean Murphy. The Delaware secondary is doing an outstanding job. Rogers again had all the time he needed to complete that pass, but he just couldn't find anyone open. And it's no wonder he's he's got that time. I keep the hate to keep belaboring the point, but you look at some of the, the size that Towson's got across that front line. You're talking about 280s and 270s and 250s, and it's easy to see why he's getting good blocking. Second down and 10. Rodgers, this time, his tailback, Brian O'Neill, can't bring in the pass. They do have great size up front. Number 50 is their center, Stan Eisenhuth. He is a transfer from Arizona Western Community College. He had aspirations of big-time football. Penn State told him to go west and get some schooling in. And he has come back east to play football here at Towson. He is 6'6", 270 pounds. His quarterback right there behind him is 6'4", 210 pounds. Third down and 10 as Rodgers retreats again. Murphy unable to bring it in. Threw A it couple him. of times, Murphy has been open. He missed one early. Earlier, actually, it was late toward halftime that would have put Towson deep in Delaware territory. So I guess Rodgers is saying, now we're even. You dropped one on me, and I threw one behind you. Now let's get our act together. In our last to seven or eight plays, no one wants to hold on to the football. We've had three exchanges and then the incompleted passes. Nolan, they're coming after him. They don't get there. Quig took a shot at him. Actually, a shot at the football. Campbell has it go out of bounds on Delaware, as we have said, Time and time again in this 1983 schedule, the hens will operate deep in their own territory as Joe Campbell goes to the sideline and let's see who the quarterback will be on this sort of day. It is John Spar. Spar came in in the second quarter after Webster threw a pass that was intercepted and returned officially 21 yards for the only touchdown that we have. Spar. Is turning it in. He's giving a piggyback ride to Bob Poist, a weak side linebacker, number 99. And Spar, a little bit slow getting up. Here's John, all six foot three. 
It was about 197. Comes to Delaware from Cherry Hill over in New Jersey. One of the Towson tackles, number 54, Pat Murphy, uh, came off the field. Uh, looked like he was nursing a turned ankle or something. Two-yard pickup for Spar, second down and eight. Reader, and he's not going to get much. 3-4 defense doing a job against Delaware. That stop was made by Jeff Keene. Keene, the strong side linebacker, wears number 58. And we have a flag down. We had a lot of flags in the first half, and this and is the first penalty. Penalties in the first half. Uh, Towson had three for 37 yards. Delaware was penalized five times for 47. And the Hens are going to face a holding call against him right here. And Delaware is going to make a change in the offensive front. Pat McKee is going to come out. Let me correct myself. It's not McKee. It's Randy Smith, the left tackle. We'll have to pick up his replacement. It'll probably be Tom Pesherin. The ball is marked off back to the seven and a half yard line on the holding call against Delaware. Third down will face the Hens and they'll need about 13 from their own eight yard line. Slagle, Tim Slagle in motion. Reader, 15, 20, diving out close to the 23. That's enough for a first down. Dan Reader from Christiana High School, the Hens' leading carrier. That's a good call in that position. Actually, and it's only one of two calls that you have. You either pass or you, you, you use the draw. Well, the uh, thing that impressed me was the, the, the fake that John Spar carried out after he slipped the ball to Reader. That uh, caught a couple of Tigers leaning the wrong way at the 23-yard line. First down and 10. Spar oh, intercepted brother. by Rogers. Rogers is going to run out of real estate, but Greg Rogers has the interception, and Delaware turns it over again. He did the same thing on this interception, Len. He came from behind the intended receiver and stepped right in front of him just as the ball was getting there. Number two being congratulated on the Towson sideline. Let's take His another last look. interception went for a score. Spar hits wildly, it and it's behind the intended receiver anyway, and here comes Rogers, and he just ran out of real estate, or he would have picked up more yardage not, on the return. He's not protecting that ball very well either. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. Brett Rogers throwing and Hernando Mejia gets hit on the helmet and the flag goes down. It's going to be first and goal I'm afraid. Mejia got tapped on the helmet and the flag was thrown immediately. Pass interference, signals referee Joseph Shirk, first down and goal at the one-yard line. Oh, uh, that's that's a shame, too. That ball was overthrown. There was Mejia no way he was going to catch it. Mejia is six foot four, so whoever tapped him on the head, we didn't pick up the number. They had to jump a little bit to get it up there. First and goal at the one-yard line. Jimmy Newfrock may have uh, been the victim as far as Delaware is concerned on that pass interference call. Here is a new running back. This is Jeff Bethard, number 30. Jeff Bethard is the son of Bobby Bethard, the general manager of the Washington Redskins National Football League team. He is one of two Bethards playing here at Towson State. Bill Maley on the sideline. Bill, the Delaware defense backed up against the wall. Well, it looks like they thought they were in a, a they were in a run at defense. They were expecting to run. Newfrock got caught up. He had to run back. Ended up interfering with the guy trying to go for the ball. Bethard dives. He dove a little prematurely. He started diving at around the three-yard line, Howard. He had a long <laughs> way to go. He was on his way down by the time he got to the line of scrimmage. Two straight carries by Bethard and Towson State. Actually, as uh, 
lost ground as the ball is pushed back to the two-yard line. Beathard is a freshman from Vienna, Virginia, at 190 pounder. Big play coming up right here for the Delaware defense. He's going to pass for it. He He's not going to do it. Sean Riley, 58, is underneath Rogers. Bill Bailey on the sideline. You were right there looking at it, Bill. Delaware tried, De or excuse me, Towson tried to catch Delaware looking for the run, but Mike Harris wasn't fooled. He covered him. He covered the back coming out of the backfield. Gave the gave the line enough time to get to the quarterback. So Nolan will come on, and he'll be hitting it uh, basically straight on. Loons to hold it for him at the 15, 25-yard field goal attempt. Remember, he's been unsuccessful on two tries so far, but this one looked better. And it is good here at Delaware Stadium in Newark. Upstart, Towson State. The Tigers, who came to Newark, and I might add, uh, drove up on Saturday morning from Towson, came in heavily on the underside. In other words, Delaware is the big favorite. And Towson State leading Delaware with nine and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter at 10 to nothing. And Delaware, well, the offense didn't show up for the first half, and they haven't shown up here in the third quarter. The Del I got it. You got to take your hat off to this Delaware defense. They are really doing a good job. You know, they spent almost 19 minutes of the first half on the field. And uh, so far in the second half, they're logging a lot of playing time. Delaware's offense, we said it last week, <laughs> cohesiveness. They have lacked it in their first five ball games, even though they've won three times. But they are trailing now here at 10 to nothing. This will be higher at the 10. 20. Out short, just short of the 25-yard line. Sam Zepka makes the stop on him. At the 23-yard line, Hire will stay in now with the offense. And we haven't uh, called the name Kaysan very much at all in this contest. He's been... Uh, a relative unknown as far as Delaware's offense is concerned. He carried the ball two times in the first half. He's not going to carry it here. They're going to give it to Reeder, and they're just stacking Reeder up. The Tigers, uh, with a little more fuel added to the fire by Nolan's successful 25-yard field goal. Here's another look at the return by Hire from ground level. Kaysan doing the blocking out in front of him. It gets a little bit fierce down there. It do. You see the bodies collide. Two-yard pickup on the first down play out to the 25. Second down and eight. Kaysan comes in motion. Spar. And they're oh. not going to go for anything but John Spar. Bob Boyce. That time with assistance. Big number 99 rides down Spar. Spar had the option that time of flipping it off to John Kaysan, but he held the ball himself. I don't know how many times Towson scouted Delaware, but they did their homework. Somebody's done a good job. They are looking for just about everything Delaware has tried. The fullback game, the sweep game, nothing has worked. Third down and nine, a yard loss on the play. Spar, he throws it behind Kaysan. And still Delaware is looking for a pass completion. Well, he had one, but Heyer turned it over. All right. So Delaware will be forced to punt away again. Tubby Raven and his staff. That's Ed Maley, the tall gentleman right next to him. They've got to be puzzled. Mike Anderson. He'll kick, remember, into the wind. Straight up. The wind holds it up, and Kaufman signals for a fair catch back inside his 40-yard line. And Towson State leading Delaware here. Heavily favorite Delaware at 10 to nothing, with eight minutes and two seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. The Tigers on offense. Once again, the Delaware defense only got to rest for three plays that time. Nothing 
sustained at all by the Delaware offense. Loons sets up in the slot. Actually, it's Murphy, and he's going to take it on a flanker reverse. And he's got good running room. Murphy, Sean Murphy, yeah, he claps his hands. He's happy. Set up in the slot. Jim Poloski finally made the stop. But not before Loons had put the football at the Delaware 44-yard line. Another look at it. Watch this fake coming up right here. Oh. He's got Joe Quigg leaning the wrong way. Sure did. First and 10 at the 44-yard line of the Blue Hens. Draw. And on the last play, and again on this one, although this one doesn't go for much yardage, only a couple before Wilkins goes down. The Delaware defense, the fact tower that you pointed out that they've been on the field just about all day, it's almost beginning to tell in their legs. Joe Quigg made that last stop, so he's he's still in the game. Well, Delaware's defense has been in the game most of the way, but the scoreboard is owned right now by Towson at 10 to nothing. Second down and nine from the 43 of the Blue Hens. Rogers, Murphy's wide open. Oh. Well, Murphy, not, all wide fairness. open. He made a fake down toward the post and then cut it to the outside, and Mike Harris was completely turned around. In all fairness to Rogers, he had Vaughn Dickinson in his face that time, too. And he hadn't loaded it long. That's been his problem. If anything, I'll tell you, they're going to look back at this game by the Tigers and say, my gosh, look at all the opportunities we've wasted. They have cashed in on an interception from 21 yards by Greg Rogers in the first half, 25-yard field goal by Jerome Nolan, the freshman kicker here in the third quarter, but they've had other chances, and Rogers has not been able to connect. Third down and nine from the 43. O'Neill, he will be short of a first down as he penetrates the 40-yard line. Quig knocks him off his feet. O'Neill coming up short. And once again, it's Stan Eisenhuth and company doing the job up in the trench. Eisenhuth, well, actually gets beat on that play, but someone picked him up. Mike McCabe, the guard, picked up Eisenhuth, who missed his block. And here, swinging out of the backfield, comes O'Neill. Short of a first down by four. Nolan will punt it away. The Blue Hens come, but they don't get there. He angles for the sideline. Not a very good kick. But again, Delaware operating from deep in its own field position. You can see what an effect the wind is having on this game by looking at the punting in the first half. Towson State kicked three times for a total, or punted three times for a total of 63 yards. That's a 21, uh, 21 yards per kick average, and Delaware punted four times for 120 yards, which is only a little bit better at 30 yards. B.J. Webster, as Tubby Raymond continues to play musical quarterback, as Delaware operates from its own 19, Webster has the ball batted in the air. Getting a big hand up for Towson State, Sheldon Nelson. Let me tell you a little bit about number 88. For the Towson State Tigers, he is the senior citizen of the Tigers. Sheldon is an ex-Marine, 24 years of age. He plays defensive end just to the left of our screen. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 6'4", 232 pounder, went to East Carolina, then went to the Marines, then on to Towson. Second down and 10, Quezon, nothing. They just stack everything up. The 3-4 has been very effective here for Towson. Don Washington, the middle guard, staying and holding his ground as Delaware is finding the size of Towson State up front just too much to handle. 240 is Pat Murphy if he's in the contest. He had been shaken earlier. Nelson goes 232. Washington a hard-nosed 235 at middle guard. Third down and eight from the 21. Hammond. He makes the reception. He gets the cheers. And he gets a first down. 
Paul Hammond, who came into the contest with 19 receptions, gets his first of the game. There it is again. Nice sideline pattern. Comes down, manages to keep both feet in bounds. Well, he only needs one, but he gets both of them in. Paul Hammond from Concord High School in Wilmington, Delaware, with his 20th reception of the year. First and 10 at the 37-yard line for the Blue Hens. And that was a milestone, a first down. Here's Reeder. And he is going to be close, a couple of yards short of another first down. So the home breads are doing it for the Hens. First Hammond from Concord High and Danny Reeder from Christiana High School. He'll be short of a first down. And maybe this is the catalyst that Delaware needs to get, get something sparked here on offense. The Reeder just doesn't want to quit. He'll be short. As you can see, the marker two yards away. Delaware at their own 45 and a half. They need to get to the 47 and a half for a first down. Kaysan. Reader throws the block. And Kaysan has got the hands. Another first down as they move into Towson territory. And we haven't seen that happen. Bob, Only once, I believe, before Bob this Hoist time. almost catches him from behind, too. Reader putting the